Hey everyone, this is Alex and today we're going to do a video about this little guy which is the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. So instead of being a talking head, well it's going to be a talking hands with the Speed Editor. Hey everyone, this is Alex the Editor from the future. So I've changed a little bit the video and what I'm going to do is basically you will see how did I use the speed editor in the cut page show you a little bit of the keys how they work and at the end of the video I'm actually going to do a full review because I did actually use it a little bit more since then I'm gonna do exactly that a review of it from a beginner's perspective of course and who would benefit the most from this speed editor so you can either use the timestamp below for of course skipping around or going straight to that conclusion if this is what you want and I would really appreciate if you hit that like button below also and subscribe for this video and all the others thank you guys and enjoy the video full disclosure I bought uh, the speed editor bundle with DaVinci Resolve Studio on the screen right now this is not studio version this is the free version because you need to actually activate it for version 17 which I'm gonna do later so Blackmagic Design or DaVinci Resolve did not pay me or any of that kind I bought it I wanted to try it and I wanted to encourage them to continue this wonderful software and I think that's a very nice way of doing it and I think they've been very generous with their offer so why not start with the little guy and this is going to be a video about this of course but it's going to be about this as a newbie or should I say someone that does not really use the cut page because this little guy is mostly made for the cut page it's going it's actually going to be a discovery for all of us if you ever want to see the instruction manual for this just going to help DaVinci Resolve reference manual it's gonna open up a PDF, go into the chapters. Chapter three is using DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor where you can read about it and how to use it. I did already read that uh, yesterday. We're gonna see today if I remember a thing or two. <laughs> the cut page is mostly a way to mimic old school cutting, which you had a strip of film and you would cut the strip of film to make clips. In those clips you would create a master with it. Quick notes, of course you have the source and you have the timeline button. These are very big because you're gonna use them. <laughs> and I'm gonna go through these keys at the same time that I'm actually cutting the intro that you just saw. So yes, the intro that you just saw was cut entirely with this. <laughs> Hopefully that's gonna work. Right now in the jug mode is pretty much frame by frame and the scroll mode will be will jump way faster it does jump clip to clip i'm gonna put my specs of my machine i just changed my machine for a new one and this can give you an idea of how smooth it is with your hardware so you can compare a little bit this mode is actually mostly like a forward stop reverse mode as, as far as you go you can see here the speed where you're going. I pretty much like these modes because uh, I can scroll way fast, but I guess this is your workflow, you choose. Hmm, hmm. This is oddly satisfying. <laughs> it's so responsive, you have no idea. And you can go to the full view. So I guess I could record the screen but that would be like recording a screen in a screen but it's way faster to do that than to actually program it right all right so let's go for the first clip so i'm going to choose one of these so you can use the in and outs if you ever cut like this you choose the start of the clip and will be about here out and then you can actually insert it either by appending or smart insert but right now i have nothing on my timeline so that's fine. So that clip is now on my timeline. And the goal of the speed editor is of course to complement the keyboard and the mouse. Right now I didn't touch the mouse except of course to show you things around, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm stuck between the, uh, the two in and out, or I can do escape to go back to the full timeline of the clips. 
which is not the timeline, it's the source. And now you can actually remove the in and out by double tapping. So let's do it again. Hey, pra practice makes perfect. I just want to test something. Source, let's go for something else. So it's gonna be easier to uh, identify. In, out, and smart insert. Hmm, that's interesting. So it's putting it to the left. Let's undo. Let's go a little bit here, right here. Now it's putting it to the end. So I guess it depends. It's gonna look where you are and it's gonna go left or right, depending on where you are in the clip. So I've, my, I've got my two first clips and I'm gonna go to my next clip, which is the box opening. So I'm gonna start here and out, append, keep going, out, append, in, out, append. After that, this is the colors. I wanted to use the colors from the logo of DaVinci Resolve. All right, for now, I'm gonna have to use the old logo because the new one is not on the website. So this should be blue, kind of yellow, red. So let's go into my source material. Oh, I did something. There we go. Or insert that. Actually, wait, no after this, so I'm gonna have to use the smart insert. Hopefully that's gonna insert that in the middle. It did, so clip, opening, opening, opening with light, transform, lights, spinning. All right, wow, that was a learning experience. When you are actually on the edit page, you can see that we have some flexibility, right? So you can, see the audio tab larger and see more when the sound is present and i'm actually using that a lot to make the cuts of my clips especially if i am on the edit tab of course but if we go back to the cut page this is the only thing we see right here can you see all the little bumps this is so small we can't see a thing there's no way to stretch it so we can't see more of that. So it's mostly a visual video cutting thing and not necessarily a precision thing. And by precision, I mean when I'm on an edit page, I can actually zoom in, which you can't do on the cut page. And let's say I want to remove only one frame. Well, I can do that. And I'm gonna say, hey, this one frame right here, I can actually break it and then I can delete it easily. In conclusion, is this for you? It's very satisfying to use it, especially the search dial, which is very, very, very intuitive. The only thing is that you need to actually learn all of this. Uh, of course, some of these will, I will not use. For example, the camera section, which is more for when you have multiple cams in the same scene. As for the keyboard itself, it's very satisfying. The key press is very, very nice. Makes me think a little bit like a mechanical keyboard. And I'm gonna put my mic near just to, you can hear it. And the search dial actually makes no sound at all. You can connect it with Bluetooth or with a USB Type-C like here. Cable not included in the box. It will only work with DaVinci Resolve 17, which is in beta right now. Some people still have problems with the beta 6, which I'm testing it right now. So just wait if you, this is your money-making machine. So for who is the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor for? Who can benefit the most out of this machine? As a no-brainer, let's say that you actually wanted to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio and that you didn't want to buy any other gear because if you buy a gear from Blackmagic Design, for example, a camera, you will have a license for free. So you have a computer, you have no gear to buy and you want to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio and this bundle is available. Well, this is a no brainer. You should buy it for multiple reasons. And I'm talking about the bundle, of course, which combine the speed editor 
and the license for DaVinci Resolve Studio. First thing first, it doesn't cost more. It's the same price. I think there might be a little shipping fee, but that's about it. And that's going to make you discover Blackmagic Design materials, consoles, because they have way bigger consoles than this. So this is a very good entry point to discover how awesome those things are. And as an entry point, that's perfect. So the second person I would think about for buying this is someone who actually used the cut page extensively. You're using the mouse and the keyboard and you're just using the cut page to roughly cut first strip or your first clips and you do use the in and out shortcut on the keyboard usually and I believe these are the keys so yes this will be way better especially if this is your work the speed editor has a good name it will speed up your process now for who this is not I think that if your hardware is two or more years old i think you should probably invest first in better hardware for example if you are using hard drives for your os and your data you might put some money in there first if you have a processor that is three years old or more probably that you should invest in there instead and if you have less than 16 gig of ram i would probably invest there too for who this is not also if you don't use the cut page and don't intend to use it maybe for you the cut page slows you down although that the speed editor will speed it up but let's say you are not interested on the cut page you don't want to try it you don't want to use it of course this is not for you maybe you actually have the davinci resolve studio version and you are working in a studio and your role is only for colors or you're only doing music or you're only doing fusion things well obviously the speed editor for you will not be useful if you have some questions about the speed editor please comment below and i will try to answer it either by another video or just by commenting below myself hopefully guys this video was helpful to you and instructing and can help you make a better buying decision on the speed editor and see you in the next video.